Hey everyone, it's time we talk about another aspect of what makes level design so important, crucial, and elements that could possibly help you improve yours. Hey everyone, I hope you're well playing and making the games that you all love. You're joining me, your host, Max Pears. Absolute pleasure to be chatting with you today. I hope that you're having a great time, whether it be morning, evening, or night. As you can hear, I'm a bit gruffly. Sadly, I did catch COVID during the time that I'm recording this. But uh, luckily, I feel like I'm going to be coming out the other side. <laughs> okay. So we get the boosters and the jabs, my friends. But yeah. But first... Let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is none other than me. What I've done, everyone, and I hope you're excited for this, is I've actually created a level design kind of store. What I've done in this store is put up different kinds of tips and tricks that you can find there, whether that be my actual ebook itself to that of level design pamphlets focused on different things such as traversal, stealth, breaking into the industry as well as different talks that I have done which you cannot find anywhere else other than on this store. So if you are looking to improve on your level design skills and processes, then check out the level design store, which will be down in the description below where there'll be a link to find this. All you need to do is head over to gumroad.com forward slash level design lobby. I hope you like what you see and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you and now back to the show just want to say that this is going to be a bit of a short one with me feeling a little bit ill but i'll try and go into uh, as much as i can for for what we have in the terms of the topic now this topic here was inspired by a previous video that i saw done by stephen lee in which he was talking about that of why making level design portfolios is strange now and and elements of thoughts on that i did a video expanding on my thoughts on that as well because i thought it's such a great idea but there's one thing that i came back to after speaking with other aspiring lds through my mentorship program or through on the students that have attended the cgma course which i've been teaching and That to me would be that of scripting. Now, scripting is such a huge part of the level design process and part of the job now. And each studio will have you scripting to various degrees. There are whole teams in bigger studios which actually have more technical roles. Some of you may have seen them, technical level designers, which focus on making tools as well as the scripting process far more easier for the other LDs working on this. But I thought it was a great point that he raised we talked about the elements of seeing a lot of blockouts, and as I believe I said in the video, I agree, there's a lot more blockouts there. And part of the reason that I believe that that stuff is being shown a lot more is simply because of the fact that blockouts, I, they're not as good as art for sure, but they still have artistic vision, they still show you your the thought, the intent, the roots for the player. But scripting doesn't have that, shall we say, uh, sexy appeal to it, right? In terms of the process behind it. We've all seen that of Blueprint or Code itself, right? But even now, right, the software I'm using, Audacity here, or YouTube, it's all brought together by code. We all know this. But it's the same with levels, right? At Level Design Lobby, we believe everybody has a story to tell. Hobbyist or student, freelancer or veteran, we made it our mission to unite those who share our passion for creating and developing great games. Thanks to our generous Patreon backers, we've been able to do just that. So if you've already pledged your support, thank you. If not, you too can ensure the future of Level Design Lobby, helping us to create even more exciting content, collaborations, interviews, and much more. With awesome perks and rewards, whether you're a seasoned professional or just getting started, you're sure to find something for you. Want to share tips, tricks, and advice with passionate, like-minded developers? Our awesome community Discord has you covered. Fancy practicing your level design, creating strong portfolio content, and having fun? Then try our level design weekends. Or perhaps you want to individually discuss your work, hone your skills, or level up your career then consider our one-on-one mentorships. 
If you share our vision, then go to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby for more information and to pledge your support. Thank you. It's important for us as LDs to make sure that we do understand how to script, that we are able to make things and elements happen, come to life within the game that we're making, making sure that our spaces don't feel dead and empty. We want them to feel alive and almost reactive to the player's choices and the consequences for what the player has decided to do, as well as providing the challenge. And some of you may be wondering, okay, yeah, I know this, but why are we talking about it? I think it's something that has just hit me, and again, re-watching what Stephen had, uh, had said in this. And the element of that, of scripting levels, I think is super important. Because I didn't realize at the time when I was making my response to that, but the problem with, I think, only blockouts being shown, and I'm guilty of sharing just blockouts, whether it be professional or personal work as well. But on a professional level, you will have to, to experience the the level properly, you will play the, the elements that I've scripted. But sometimes not always on the, the personal work. I, I did have some elements of that in my art gallery level, but none in the Spider-Man. And that was simply because at the time I knew I was planning to look for another job and I just wanted to work on something slightly different. And even if I just had enemies patrolling and some other small elements interacting that players could hit or move, I think that would have been a far more impactful experience for those who are watching. So I share this with you because I think it's important to inspire and remind those who are looking to get into games, that are looking to become better level designers, that spend time doing that. Do spend time scripting your levels. The other thing I'd say is when we're saying scripting, we're not saying make the full mechanic, right? I've used this example in previous episodes, but it's worth bearing in mind again. If you had, say, for example, a climbing section, you're building a, let's say, a level in Tomb Raider or Uncharted or even Jedi Fallen Order, there's a lot of climbing in these games. But you might not have the ability or time to make a climbing system, right? Because animations are now needed as well. But what you can do is place down, for example, yellow bricks along the wall that you believe would create the pattern. And then you could make a teleportation volume, which when you hit it or jump into it, so you jump to reach the ledge, it teleports you to where the ledge would actually lead the player itself, the climb. It would still get the the point across. Now there are packages you actually can buy for both Unity and Unreal which will allow the player to climb, but this is what the level of degree I'm trying to emphasize on. When you're scripting these, we obviously need to make things happen, but no one's expecting you as a level design portfolio to have all the, the actual fully finished mechanics. Having enemy patrols is great, having them attack the player, brilliant if we can get that, but I wouldn't need to, to worry or emphasize that on getting the finished final product. What we need to do is being able to communicate our ideas because that's to me is the most important part of level design and any part of design is communicating what it is that we're trying to achieve. So spend time working and trying to sell that because I think that's super important for it. So if it can be something, it's, it's like, for example, just an example for, for me, I've just been starting to learn Blender a bit more recently. Now, when I say that, I don't mean I am a fantastic modeler or anything like that. Far from, trust me, it's uh, embarrassing <laughs> some of the things that I make. But I'm creating these kind of placeholder props, which allows me to then export it and then put it in whatever engine I'm, I'm using to sell the idea. So I can make it look, say, for example, close to a skeleton, uh, a head, a, a chair, whatever it is that I need to create. It allows me to sell the idea as I then start to script a placeholder, or shall we say prototype, in the engine. So when you're working on your next portfolio piece, when you're thinking about what to design, don't just think about the block out. By all means, keep sharing those pictures. I think it's great. But think about what you can do gameplay-wise. Make sure that the player has to stand on a button to open a door. I know that's a bit more old school in terms of mechanics. But these elements on top of what you're making will make your work stand out, but also prepare you for what it's actually like to work inside the industry. I think it's really important because level design has gone more into script than it had in, in previous years. I'm talking long before I had gone in the industry. So I think 
these these elements are important for us. And you you never know what it's going to open it up for. It could maybe open it up for a career for you to work in gameplay as you design gameplay mechanics for the teams. It could open you up to become a technical designer. Or, even better, the whole purpose of it, it allows you to sell and communicate your ideas like no others before and makes your work stand out. It makes it far superior to anyone else's I say superior, that's a really bad way of phrasing it. I'm, I use the word <laughs> in terms of that when you're trying to stand out applying for a job. So I apologize, superior. Jesus Christ, that really was a bad choice of words on my end. I apologize. But spend some time working on that side. I know that's something I'm going to be doing moving forward. And I hope this has just made you contemplate, thought more of it, think about what to do. There are great tutorials out there. I'll put some out there for Playmaker and what's the one uh on real blueprints as well put some tutorials in the description that i've used as well just because i think it's great to show i've seen it hinder some of the people i've worked on the mentorship program as well as I said cgma when it came to the interviews that they'd said oh we see your work but we don't see any scripting elements in it which sadly cost them the job so just keep that in mind there guys i said it's a great thing to be able to do you will be required to do it and just yeah overall great stuff awesome okay well that's where we're going to end this episode I said i'm gonna <laughs> go back to bed and rest up but take care and i hope you and your loved ones are safe if you want to reach out to me any more questions you can do so over at twitter which is at max pairs email into show level design lobby at gmail.com and uh, if you want to support the show to help make sure that we only get better and better or looking for mentorships to help improve your own skills head over to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby take care everyone and i'll catch you all next time Bye.